Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Lynn and I created Flow, F-L-O-E, Facilitating Love on Earth and that is where I have been birthing books and the Mushroom Medicine Oracle deck into fruition as well as holding what I call soul sessions for humans. And obviously not just humans, because that's also what birthed the Mushroom Medicine Oracle deck. But um, for humans in my intuitive counseling practice. And I just wanted to get on here because there's been some questions regarding how the Mushroom Medicine Oracle deck was created and I'm feeling drawn just to make a short video and put it out there for anybody that's curious. Obviously, I could talk about this for a long time and share a lot of things, but I'm just gonna hopefully keep this really short. So, I wanna begin in 2015, 2016, when I really started to be disciplined in my nature practice of just for my own personal sanity, um, going out and walking in nature every day in all types of weather, um, all, all the seasons. I was in Michigan and sometimes I would be grieving and sometimes I would be angry and sometimes I would just be filled with so many questions and sometimes I would be um, holding a lot of family stuff um, for other people and sometimes I'd be holding things for my clients um, as a counselor and and then sometimes I, it was my own personal stuff and so I found that when I was walking in nature, in the country, we lived in the country and we had this path, I called it the heart's path because it was a green uh, grassy path that was mowed and there was woods all around so I could start on the heart's path and then I could venture into the woods and there was a, a creek that ran through as well and um, and even a, an airstrip where the previous owner um, was a pilot and that's where he would fly his airplanes. So I would take myself out there and and walk. And sometimes I'd walk for a half hour. Sometimes I would walk for three hours. And doing this every day, whether it was snowing, a blizzard, raining, cold, hot, whether I was tired, whether I was excited and anxious and wanted to be out in nature, even if I didn't want to be out in nature, it was kind of like my dumping ground. It was where I reset. It was just where I went to process everything and give it all back. And I found day after day, um, I don't know how long it took, but eventually I would realize that when I would start out on my walks, I was very full of my thoughts and my emotions. And by the end of my walks, I was empty and I was I was clear and I was present and I was connected and it became a meditation just organically and through the the presence that would emerge that connected space of just oneness with all of life and empty but fully present that I would notice or be drawn to certain things in nature at different moments. And um, one particular day I was in the forest and I remember being drawn to a mushroom and I'm trying to think right now, telling the story what mushroom it was, but <clears throat> I don't know, a part of me wonders if it was um, ink cap. But I was drawn to a mushroom and I was at a park in the woods called Sleepy Hollow in Michigan that I hiked and would walk there a lot as well. 
And I just heard crystal clear beyond my own thinking mind, nothing is what it seems. And the word nothing really stood out. Like it just put me in a state of awe. Nothing is what it seems. Nothing is what we've been taught. And if you can hold that space around nothing, then it just opens you up to this infinite potential and possibility. Because if nothing is what we think and nothing is what it seems and nothing is what we've been taught, then what is it? Then what, it, then what is this world that we are a part of and what are we and what is nature and what is life and <clears throat> what, is that, what is everything, right? What is all these concepts and experiences? And, and so that began my journey and I would bring my notebook and I would like a diary and I would keep notes and I was always drawn to take photos of many things in nature, but especially mushrooms. And another time I was walking and I remember a mushroom drew me in and it told me that we are, I used to call them my, they were my friends. So I don't eat mushrooms. And just because I, I've never enjoyed the flavor or the taste and the texture. And I remember talking to people like they'd be like well, oh why do you love mushrooms because most people when they talk about that it's because they eat them and I would say oh I don't eat them I just love them they're my friends so that's just what I've always said when when asked but this particular time I was in the woods and again this is 2016 and I heard we are your family we are the closest to your family we are your ancestors and I wrote that in my journal and fast forward, you know, three years, um, at least two years, because I remember when the Fantastic Fungi documentary was coming out and they were advertising for maybe a year before it actually came out in 2019. So, so maybe there was um, commercials and advertisements in 2018 for it, but um, be this was a couple years before that. And one of the things that the documentary shares as well is we are your ancestors. We are family. And um, so I, I just found that fascinating. But um, to stay around that time in 2019, my family moved from Michigan, which is the home state and the only place I've ever known where I've ever lived. And we moved across the country to New Hampshire. And as exciting as that move was, and it's full of infinite possibilities and connecting to even very early on childhood and adolescent dreams um, for my husband and I, it launched me into a year and a half of really deep grief and loss and death and a metamorphosis that was extremely emotionally painful. As physically uncomfortable as it looked and appeared and was at times, it was 100% emotional. Um, so I lost, while I was grieving, I lost my hair, it all fell out, my skin was covered in um, really like red, um, blotchy, flaky uh, sores, and um, my eyes were swollen and just, it seemed like, you know, whatever this was, was taking everything. It was taking my, my roots, my, what my definition of family was, what my role in life was, um, my past, my concepts around marriage and motherhood and grandmothering. And, um, I was just, I was shedding, that's the appropriate word. I was shedding everything. And, grieving, like there was nothing I could hold on to. Anything I was holding on to was being stripped. And so I allowed myself to go into the death. I allowed myself to, you know, to just enter into that space where everything is being taken and stripped of me. And so I didn't hold on to anything. And I call that a year and a half vision quest because every day 
that's what I was. It was a full-time job. Um, it was a lifestyle to just take care of myself and not in a way to like get better. Again, I wasn't holding on to anything. If I was going to literally die, then that's what was going to happen. I was fasting and mono fruit dieting and um, <clears throat> just in constant prayer and ceremony. And it was just a vision quest of soul to soul communication um, just with myself, right? The way we word things with our higher self, our lower self, but just with self. And that includes nature and life <clears throat> in its purest form. And in the autumn of 2020, I all of a sudden felt a tinge or a tickle, a, a tingle of new life starting to sprout in me. And it's hard to explain, but when you've been on a year and a half, day in and day out, every day, 24-7, <clears throat> of grief and death and loss and emptiness, um, and all of a sudden you start to feel life like sprouting inside of you, like a bubble of like, maybe it was just this breath of fresh air or feeling like there was hopefulness or something in me that was excited or saw beauty or something. I, I can't explain it. It was just this something I hadn't, hadn't felt in a long, long time. And I remember telling my husband that it felt like I was being born, like I was coming out of the death and the void and entering into um, life again somehow. But it wasn't life as I knew it in the past, and it wasn't going back in time. It wasn't recreating myself in the way I've always been or stepping back into the rules and the patterns that I was used to. <clears throat> Instead, it was um, a fresh aliveness that was unbound, and it had no limits and no programming and and it was just spacious and free. And I could even feel my senses and my body coming alive. And when I would eat or drink or move my body in different ways and touch and smell and taste and hear and see and connect through my senses, it was almost as if I was an infant and I was experiencing all these textures and, and things through my senses for the first time. And it was very intense, um, but in a, in a really beautiful way. Um, and whenever I would feel like I was being overstimulated, then I was able to allow myself to integrate and rest. Um, it's not like I had to always be tapped in. Um, and, and so since 2015 and 2016, I had all these photographs of mushrooms. And I even took have, had been taking photographs of the mushrooms in the forest here in New Hampshire. And I remember sharing with my family, like, I don't even know why I'm taking all, those, all these photographs. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know why I'm compelled to do that. I just am. And keeping all my journal entries. And, you know, again, that was just for myself. But through my rebirth of the autumn of 2020, I was out in the forest here where I live now in New Hampshire. And again, just like that clear knowing, that that auditory hearing that comes from another source that's not inside of you, I heard, you're going to turn us into an oracle deck. And it was like a lightning bolt hit me of, of truth. It's like when you never in a million years dreamt it and you never would have thought it. And everything that you've been doing for me at that time, it had been seven years, made total and perfect sense because I had all these musings and poetry and journal writings and prompts and things I received from the mushrooms for seven years. I had all these photographs. And so I just got, I got excited and I just knew this is, I'm supposed to do this. And it also felt like something I could share with my grandchildren and something fun, um, little card cards and they could learn and see mushrooms and go spot them outside but also have these inspirational messages as well and so I was very excited and got ahead of myself and um, I instantly started going through seven years of photos and 
drawing out just different species. And so getting one of every species that I could find on my phone. And I sent them off to an online printing source and just had them printed in square photographs for me. I never counted them, I never nothing, and then they came in the mail one day, these photographs, and I laid them all over the tables. We had a long kitchen table, and I counted them, and there was 111. And 111 is just known in different um, cultures and spiritual communities as a sign that you're being guided, angelic presence, a sign that your guides are watching over you and, and guiding you along your, la your life path. So that just felt um, serendipitous and synchronistic. And so in a traditional like tarot deck, there's 78 cards, but Oracle varies. It can be, every, any author can, can do whatever they want. Um, and so I had the number 78 kind of in my mind as a loose number, but I was open, you know, for a range um, around maybe, you know, 40 to 78. And um, I just, I got super excited. I had all these photographs that are kind of like, there's, I got them printed in a square, so they were like kind of cards. And so I was shuffling them and holding them and bringing them to my heart. And I was asking which ones want to be in this Oracle deck. And before I even drew, I kept hearing 33. Now, uh, 33 is a very deeply connected number to me. I'm a three life path in numerology. Um, I guess you would say three is my favorite number. It's the number I'm the most connected to and drawn to. So <clears throat> 33 um, had a personal connection to, to me, but when I heard it, I actually denied it. I was, I was, I didn't even think about me. I was just like, oh no, 33 is not enough. Like there needs to be a few more cards than that. And I kept hearing, no, it will be 33. And so I surrendered and stopped arguing with it. And so I had the 111 cards and I was shuffling and bringing it to my heart. And I asked what 33 was going to be in the stack and um, laid out and drew intuitively the cards. <clears throat> And so the Mushroom Medicine Oracle deck are those 33 mushrooms that came to me first. And so because I do intuitive counseling and I call my sessions soul sessions, even though I had all my journal entries and stuff from seven years that were deeply personal that I could go back to and reflect on and read, I really wanted to take this seriously with integrity. And so I had these 33 mushroom species and... I wanted to go out in the forest and sit with each one and do a soul session with them and write down and receive the messages. So for, I did one every day. So for 33 days in a row, I would take one card out into the forest. And a lot of times I could actually sit, I could find that species and I could go and sit with them and have the um, picture. But other times... I wouldn't be able to find that species. Maybe, you know, it was a different time of year or whatever, but I would be prompted to sit at a specific place in the forest and then I would put that picture down and that's how I would channel and connect with um, that mushroom and write down the message. And so I did one every day for 33 days and that is what became... Um, not only the cards, the mushroom medicine messages and the keywords, but also the extended messages in the book and the affirmations. So every mushroom, this is what's on the card and this is the extended message and every mushroom comes with an affirmation as well. Um, and there's even a, a few things in the beginning, um, little poems that... I wrote sitting out in the forest and um, and different things that, that came, some, some extra um, ways to connect with the mushrooms beyond just the, beyond just the first, this is the first card, the black trumpet. And then even in the back of the book after the last card <clears throat> is some additional um, 
musings and poetries and things. So um, that is the Mushroom Medicine Oracle deck. And it's also why um, I wrote on, I know it's all backwards right here, so I'll just read it. So it's Mushroom Medicine Oracle. And underneath the heading, it says it's a rite of passage through transition, grief, and transformation back into connection, integration, and wholeness. And that's because it's exactly the journey that I went on. And it's what brought me back to life. And it's what healed me and restored me back to my fullness after completely shedding, de um, decomposing, and, you know, letting go of everything I'd been taught. <laughs> kind of like that first message, the mushroom said, nothing is what it seems, nothing is what you've been taught. And really giving myself back to the life that birthed me, the life that created me to become nothing so that I can truly become something. So that is a tidbit on the making of Mushroom Medicine Oracle Deck by me, Nicole Lynn from Flow, Facilitating Love on Earth. And um, yes, you can still purchase in the United States um, directly through me. You can just find a way to private message me. And um, some people who don't have Venmo and PayPal, they send me payment old school but, um, through the mail. And then once I receive it, I ship and mail it to you. Um, so I just trust. I trust that the right people will find the stack. It's You don't have to be a mushroom lover. I get a lot of people who say, oh, I bought your deck and I, I never had a connection to the mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms, from my personal experience, will find a way to connect with you like the mycelium, right? The way that they weave their webs and their networks through all of life and um, in our bodies as well. And so, you know, you don't have to work with Oracle. Oracle is just a fun divination practice, but you don't have to. It's be no different than opening up um, the Bible or opening up a poetry book or any kind of devotional and bringing it to your heart and closing your eyes and then randomly opening up to a page and reading that message and just having it connect with you um, in your own unique way. It doesn't follow any kind of religion. It's um, There might be some language that's more spiritual, and yet you can swap out certain words if you don't resonate with them and put in your inner knowing or inner power. It doesn't, or universe or whatever. Like you, it's, it's really versatile, and you are able to work with this in your own way. So there could be people who love mushrooms. There could be um, mycologists. There could be foragers. There could be people who love to cook and eat them. Um, there could be more on the psychedelic side. There, there could be people who just love poetry and inspiration and affirmations and want to connect with their heart space. Um, there could be those that are just nature lovers and and people that are just drawn to the forest and they are being guided to have their inner nature and their and the outer nature be unified and connected in a deeper way. There's so many, I could just keep going and giving you examples. And I, and it's not even about giving you the examples because you'll know, you'll know in your heart, you'll know if you are guided and you are feeling drawn to, to have one of these decks for yourself. Um, and, and that's it. You know, you just trust yourself. I'll show you, you know, the, all the decks. So I showed you the booklet and the cards. So they all come in this soft, um, tuck box. And <laughs> I love how right before you open it, the mushrooms had me put, we welcome you into the mycelium network. And so, yeah, this is just the front and then the sides have the mushroom medicine. We welcome you. And then the back show a couple examples of the cards and picture of me and a little explanation about the deck that you're holding. So that's Mushroom Medicine Oracle by Nicole Lynn. And I just send all of you blessings. I know that our mind can create a lot of noise and a lot of imbalance and a lot of belief structures that aren't serving us. And we can 
create a lot of behavioral patterns that aren't serving us and um, addictions and a whole lot of things. And this deck and the 33 mushroom musings are a really beautiful way to open you back up, pour everything out, reset your system, dial you back in to life in its truest essence. You know, life is, is birthing you and living you right now as we speak. And it is beyond a lot of set rules and structures. You know, we are breathing in and out and resetting ourselves. And there's even an impulse between the inhale and the exhale. There's always this space that we can enter into and tap into more and more to realize, okay, what am I, what am I needing to let go of? What's being asked of me to release so that I can go back into the surprise, go back into life, not always know what's ahead, but feel really connected and a part of this whole thing. Hmm. Okay, share so much love.